Coleman. How'd you get down here? How was the how was the travel into Atlanta? Good, good. Had a quick flight this morning, you know, and uh, came over. It's, it's an easy hour flight from uh, Raleigh Durham. So, you guys are down here um, doing a little recruiting at C3. But you know, I like talking to you about um, we we talking about every major stage of your life, man. I was with you a lot for the Olympic yeah. stuff. I was in London. We talked to you right before you made weight. It's been a pretty cool access to you. But in talking to you throughout this whole being a competitor, now you're a head coach. Tell me about the transition from 2016 Iowa City. You're no longer a competitor anymore. Yeah. And then some interesting stuff happened yeah. with your assistant coach, Tony uh, Ramos. But um, what's it been like in the transition for you from um, coach to competitor, competitor you know, to coach? You, you always think that it would slow down, right? You, you're losing one whole facet of your life that you've had for the last 20 years, uh, and that's in competing. Um, but it's actually just we put more time into something else, you know, whether it's recruiting, whether it's this, whether it's that. But, you know, so my life's sort of hadn't changed. The only thing is I eat a lot more and I enjoy myself. And, uh, you know, I'm at peace with being done with competitive wrestling. And, um, you know, but it, it, it's a fun time for me. You know, I think we have a lot of special things going on in Chapel Hill. And uh, we're recruiting our tails off and getting these guys better every day. So. You guys are in the ACC, you know, super competitive league. You know, if you look, you guys brought home a team trophy with Virginia Tech last year. I mean, the the bar is constantly going up. NC State had one of the greatest dual seasons of all time in the ACC. How do you guys keep up in the ante? And, and you said you've taken that energy from competition now into coaching. Yeah. What's that like, and how much different is that for you guys, energy wise, body wise? How do you feel? It's, it's I feel great. You know, I, I feel great. I think it's great that we have those teams that we can compete against day in day out. You know, you want. You want competition. It's going to make us better, right? You, you always got to have somebody that's going to push you. You push them, you know, to, to get to where you want to go. Um, you know, doing it on your own is a lot harder. You know, so having Virginia Tech and uh, you know Virginia Pitt and uh, NC State, it, it's good. You know, it's great. I, I love it, and it's it's going to get us better. You know, and like you said, focusing all my energy on on coaching, on getting guys better. You know, on on recruiting, on getting the guys that fit our system. You know, that that's been our focus. You know, and, and we're well on that path. You know. And I think we're we're making strides in the room. We see it. You know, it's, it hadn't been shown on the mat yet. And you know, I look forward to you know this upcoming season to be the first full year that I have without competing. Looking at you know, like everybody judges everything on March. Uh -huh. That's the biggest part. You know, sure. ACC, NCAA tournament. Uh -huh. You know, what do you guys got to do to to punch two, three All Americans through and start getting where Virginia Tech was, yeah. where NC State was? What do you guys got to do, and what, what do you personally as a coach got to do? What do the Tar Heels got to do to get there? You know, just maximize everything. You know, my job as a coach is to get the most out of each individual. You know, and it's uh, sometimes it's during the year you got to hold these kids back. Sometimes you got to push them. You know, and it's figuring that out. And I think I've had a couple years with the kids and getting to there and get some of our own kids in there, so we, we have a better feel at where we're at. And uh, you know, but like I said, it's, it's really maximizing each kid, individual's. Uh, you know. Their, where they can go or what their goals are, how are we going to get there, you know. And like I said, sometimes we got to hold them back during the year, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a learning process, you know. Sometimes we got to push them when they don't want to be pushed, you know. Those little things that, that we're figuring out and that we figured out and uh, I've got my staff set and, you know, I feel like we, we're going to make strides, big strides this year. What's it like coaching with a guy you competed against with Tony Ramos? What is that like? Is that like, you guys still scrap it out? Like, what? how do you, how do you like, the balance with you and him. How does that work? Yeah. Uh, first off, he's a great guy. That helps a lot. You know, um, our families are close. You know, our wives talk every day. Kids hang out every day. Um, yeah, we still scrap. He's got to get better. You know, and that's and that's what you know. If he's still training, then then I'm I'm going to be one of his training partners. You know, and that and that's the hat that I put on when I when I'm rolling with him. You know, Kenny's running our practices, and I and I'm just I'm just there with Tony as a training partner when, when I'm going with him. You know, and. Uh, I'm there to help him reach his goals as well as, you know, he's, we're in this together to reach our, our own goals uh, coaching-wise. So it's a cool dynamic, you know. I mean, I don't think there's anybody else in the country that has a Oklahoma State grad and Iowa grad on the same staff, you know, uh, that have seen the two most historic programs in wrestling, you know, come together. Um, and two guys that competed <laughs> tooth and nail uh, with each other, you know, to make the Olympic team, um, you know. But, you know, coaching's not about having an ego. you got to swallow that ego. I thought he was a great candidate for what I was looking for and uh, you know I, he's an unbelievable coach and unbelievable guy and it, it, I look forward to having a long future with him. Do you still got the itch? Does it like because it's no, hard? No. You know, it's gone. None. I, I, I'm completely at peace with with retiring you know and, and I knew that's that was a big reason why I wrestled through 16. Um, at 12 it was you know came up a little short and wavering and 13 and 
You know, it was hard getting back into training and what I needed. Um, you know, but I, I knew if I walked away before 16, it would have been the later down I would have had the itch. I would have had the questioning. You know, I can walk away. I can be completely pleased with, with what I've done in my wrestling career. Um, my, my, my focus is literally, I love coaching. I love being in the room. I love wrestling. Um, I love grabbing those guys and just wrestling for an hour, you know. And now I'm able to do that. You know, I, I love going in there and just picking, you know, Tony's brain and me and him just going back and forth for a couple hours. That's that's where I'm at. That's my energy. You know, that that's that's all that energy I had competing on that training. You know, now I focus that into that, and it's you know I, I'm 100 percent at peace with being done and never competitively wrestling again. And I, I'm just you know it's it's one of those deals. I walked away, and I feel like I walked away on my terms and at my time. Okay, the million dollar question for me, I've been wondering, this has been swirling through my head for months. If they call you, get the call. Colin, you got the gold medal. <laughs> that, that's a thing, that, oh, yeah. I'm not making that up, yeah. that's a thing, yeah. right? Oh yeah. They took the silver from uh, Kudakov, yeah. the posthumously, I got, I mean, not, yeah. not, not around anymore. What, what happens if they call you? What, has that even been an option? Uh, have you thought about that at all? No, not really. He's been um, busted. He's he, banned for a year. Yeah, he's banned for a year. Um, it was a different drug test, but you know they, they keep your urine sample for eight years. So I guess we have we have another cycle to, to figure out. Would you it take out. it? Would you? Would, I mean, uh, why wouldn't you? Come on, man, you earned it. Yeah, he was cheating. Not. Yeah, probably not though. I didn't really earn it. I mean, it is what it is. I don't know if it would have helped him. You know, he beat me fair and square, and you know, in my mind, and uh, I lost because it was me wrestling. I, I don't think, uh, you know, I don't think. If he beat me because he tested positive for something, I don't think that that really enhanced him that much to beat me, you know. And that's, it is what it is, you know. I, I, I guess I'd be calling Novogratz see if that lived in the dream funds there. So I might take it. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I mean, it was a good scrap. You know, I, 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 uh, I've, I think I've only watched the match once since then, and it um, still hurts, you know, because uh, going back and watching it that one time, it was a lot closer than I think I even remembered. You know, to scoring at the end of the period, uh, both periods. Uh, you know, so a couple seconds away from really, you know, maybe the finals. I don't know, um, but it is what it is. You know, like I said, I I gave it a run. I gave it my best run, and uh, you know, had fun doing it, and uh, did a lot for my family, and my friends that supported me throughout the the whole career from six years old all the way through. Uh, you know, something. To, I mean can't really give it to them but you know that's the least I can do for them is to bring them some joy and in, uh, in me competing and them you know having 95 of them follow me to London and do all that you know so you know that stuff was for them you know I, I love it and you know I, 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 did, I did it for the glory of the sport and you know that's what we do it for as wrestlers but you know if he, he beat me fair and square I think and you know is what it is you know I'm over it uh, like I said it's, it still hurts if I would have watched it but you know I don't, I, I don't know. If he tests positive, is, you know, I guess I might take it. I don't know. But I'm still bronze medalist in my mind. You know, because you can't, can't change the, the feeling on the award stand that day, you know. Um, it's, it wasn't the, the greatest feeling, you know, hearing his national anthem. It's just not something that you wake up and dream about every day when you're training, when you're doing conditioning. You're doing the more, the everything more and more, you know. You don't think, oh, I'm going to be standing on the, the third step, you know. So, I don't think you could ever change it. You know, my feeling is I, I, I got a bronze medal. You know, I'm happy with it. You know, move on. Now it's the next chapter of my life.